Welcome to Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park. It's Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park. That's me. I'm Alan Park, and the Conspiracy Queries are uh, fresh and uh, not so fresh because some of them never get answered, and we do ask them anyway in the hopes that uh, we'll get to the resolve. It's 2015. It's already started uh, uh, roughly. If you are a satirist or someone that appreciates free speech as some kind of bizarre, unprotected, strange attack took place in Paris, killing people who make fun of people who are idiots. So that's not a really good position for me to be in or anybody else that speaks their mind. Unfortunately, um, I don't have much information on this right now. It's all fuzzy. It's all too early to say. We do talk about it. I want to spend a little bit of time telling you about our guest today. Once again, first guest of the year. How could I do it any other way? Lenny Bloom is here. He's been with us before. We're going to look at a particular incident that took place before the Paris shooting uh, called the attack on Ottawa. (laughs) There was a an attack or or two that took place there. And subsequently, now Canada has some fresh new laws and a security state clampdown. And they always do so well, don't they? Um, So Lenny is going to be here shortly, and we're going to talk about this stuff. And a lot of people are upset about um, media, you know, different media being influenced by different political uh, leanings, stripes, parties. And I guess the conservative government of Canada feels the same way because now they um, – it's it's become evident now. I mean so many people have known this for so long, but now it's in the mainstream press that the Tory government has uh, been using – that's the conservative government actually, the former reform Yahoo party. Uh, they've been using a publicity agency to create news. <laughs> That's so strange because they do create news already, lots of it, too much of it. But no, what they're doing here is this is an overt uh, sort of Mao Chinese effort to uh, control the thinking of the citizens, clearly. Meaning my fellow citizens, fascism, fascism. Uh, This is from the Toronto Star, and it says, The Ottawa, the Conservative government has been using a publicity agency to create and distribute government-approved news items. So they'll be science-free. And... uh, they're going to community newspapers and television and radio stations. Isn't that nice? The little puff pieces so that they can sell you the lies and the stories and the nonsense that you are uh, sucking up and believing. Uh, I also want to say quickly before I run away and uh, we get to our interview that um, the hero of the Canadian terrorist story, the man Kevin Vickers, who is a... Um, He's inside the House of Commons. He has a very special role in there. We'll get to that shortly. Lenny talks about it. And um, it's kind of strange because this thing has happened where he's killed this assailant and been hailed as a hero. And now he no longer has that job and he's going to be the ambassador to Ireland. (laughs) I don't know how these things work. I I never claimed that I did. Uh, But they do work. And there's all kinds of uh, strange things going on. And... First of all, um, welcome back to another series, another year, hopefully, of Conspiracy Queries. Thank you for your uh, support uh, and wondering where the show has been lately, somewhat intermittent, and um, thank you. We are we are putting things back together, and uh, we will be building a cabal, <laughs> a stable of guests that will help explain why it has been... Um, not consistent in the release, but we are changing that stuff around. Speaking of around, stick around. Here he comes, my fantastic pal, Lenny Bloom. Let's go to our interview. It's great to be back on air with you in the discarnate state, Alan. And of course, this is the electrified voice of Lenny Bloom. Absolutely. No, no, of course. It's a proxy. Right. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, you're doing well? I'm doing fine, thanks. Very well. And where are you standing right now? 
Actually, I'm uh, on my knees in prayer. Oh, I thought it might have been on the shoulder of giants. Yes. Oh, yes. yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, I'm kneeling on the shoulders of giants. Oh, my God. I'm not good enough to stand on them. You're yet. working your way to that. I'm going to stand on them one day. Okay. But what is right the goal? Now, You're standing on the, on the shoulders of giants. And, and what are you doing up there? Well, the first giant is JFK and his secret society speech in which he talked about the enemy of the American Republic was the secret societies, quote unquote. And he called them a monolithic, ruthless. Wow, I can't believe he got away with that. Conspiracy, quote unquote, John F. Kennedy. Oh, oh, he didn't get away with that. Right. President oh. Kennedy made that speech, yes. said that in his speech. So we stand on the shoulders of his stuff. So people around who criticize us for talking about conspiracies, we say, well, you've got to have a prerequisite to listen to us talk. The prerequisite is you've got to have listened to JFK's secret society speech. And the second thing is you've got to read McLuhan's work on the uh, how the uh, arts and sciences are in the pockets of these secret societies. Exactly. So is every one of them in there? Is every one of them in there? I mean, can we expect some amount of genuine artistic output that we are allowed to have access to in the world? There must be some of that. And, of course, on a small level there is. But is there any commercial, large-scale presentation of this unaffected well, by it, this agenda? Well, the average man today lives in the global theater. He's in the theater. He's looking, and his reality is based on scenery that has been concocted for him to create a false image of the world. So he's in a global theater. McLuhan used the term living in the global theater as a way of, of uh, expressing the condition that man is in at this stage. Marshall McLuhan, right. Right. So they live in the global theater and the, um, their world is, is very much articulated, generated, and created for them, and they're not aware of that. So they're basically brainwashed heavily. I hate to think it's everybody, though. No, it's definitely not everybody, but um, it's vast, by far the vast, huge majority. Yeah, well, I would agree with that. Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree with that. I was just hoping you were going to... From Babylon to Greece to Persia to Rome, if you took a look at the percentage that the artists and poets made up of the society who could see beyond the bread and circus shows. Mm -hmm. It's always somewhere between five. It was less than 5% of the population. Wow. So I'd say that probably... Sounds like Brazil right now with uh, Catholicism. I'd, I'd say it's down to about um, 1%. 1%. A third of 1%. Oh, sorry. You're taking it down I think too far. I percent can see the global theater. Okay. Well, I'm trying to, and everybody listening is trying to, and thanks for listening, uh, everybody that is. We're, uh, once again, with the fantastic Lenny Bloom, former host of Cloak and Dagger on AM640 in Toronto, a show no longer on the air. I, I wonder why that happened. <laughs> that's, a, that's a saga in itself. We won't go there right now because... Um, Lenny wants to talk about some other things, and so do I. We, we want to get into a little bit about 2014. This is the first show of 2015. And last year in Canada, in uh, uh, late October, uh, something happened here. And um, not all of it was fully reported all at one time, which I found quite strange. <laughs> I, I say facetiously. Uh, there was an attack in the uh, city of Ottawa, the capital city of Canada, and uh, it was a, a, a purportedly an ISIS attack. And um, the ceremonial soldier, uh, a, a soldier performing ceremonial duty, guard duty, at a very uh, well-observed uh, central point right across from a, a fantastic hotel, the Chateau. Oh, what is that one, Lenny? The Chateau. Uh, what's the Laurier. Laurier? The Laurier, right, in, in Ottawa, of course. Um, there was an attack there. I mean, this thing is swarming with tourists and city goers and workers and everything all the time. There's people all over the place. And uh, a soldier uh, performing the ceremonial guard was uh, uh, just uh, set upon by some uh, purported lunatic who, who shot him and killed him, Nathan Cirillo. And, um, and unfortunately, Nathan Cirillo um, did not have an actual bullet in his gun, in a real gun, because it was a ceremonial guard. So it was, it was either a blank or, or no bullet in the chamber. 
And I just want to stop right here and say, I think that's ridiculous. I think if you actually have a guard and you're bothering to have a guard at a place he should, and he's got a gun and he's a guard, he should probably have a bullet. Um, but I guess they might want to look at that policy. However, he was killed. And then this person that did this, um, well, he's got to be looked at by some other people. This is a pretty big, it's not Times Square, but there's a lot of people around there. And then he manages to get from there unaccosted, unmolested, gets himself into a car, drives down the street un- unmolested, un- uncontested, gets in front of the parliament buildings where all the politicians are, gets out of the car and unmolested, runs into the parliament building. It's like a, a, 50, a hundred yards or something more to get into the front of the building and then starts going on a, a supposed rampage. And then uh, uh, the speaker, uh, a ceremonial speaker of the House managed to uh, shoot him and kill him dead. And now, and now we have to, the next day, pass through a bill of laws uh, that Canada had previously um, opposed under, under uh, a previous application of those similar laws under a, a different minister of justice. Have I lost you here? Anyway, what I was saying was Canada said no to a series of uh, invasive snooping rules uh, along the lines of NSA. And uh, we rejected this. We amazingly rose up as a consciousness as a nation, which we rarely do unless we're watching hockey, and said, no, no, you're not passing that bill, majority government. And we actually made them back off. So they tucked most of those uh, uh, principles and rules into a subsequent bill, kind of tucked it away, and then enacted them the day after this terrible um, terrorist incident. And I found it incredible that uh, this guy was able to do all of this scene by so many people, but not only was he able to do this, that it was done within the time frame of what is called Operation Determined Dragon. You can look it up on a website on the government of Canada. Operation Determined Dragon was a sort of a, a police summit, if you will, exercise. It was an exercise uh, to um, keep an eye on terrorist type of activities that might be going on in the uh, highly visible and tourist and um, such prominent buildings as Parliament. And this exercise had been going on for about a week. They had the RCMP was there. The Ottawa police were on alert. They had the uh, military was there. There were several people in office buildings in the earlier days of this Operation Determined Dragon available still on a Canadian website explaining this whole thing that I'm saying so you don't think I'm a conspiracy nut. It says all of this. And people were taking pictures out of their uh, windows saying, look at all the police cars out of my uh, office window today. I've never seen this before. What's going on? And under this particular heightened sense of security that was relatively, you know, unannounced, it's on a website, but it wasn't on the news. Our 10 o'clock newsreader was not telling us about this. Uh, And this exercise was happening. So how can an exercise where we're focusing on the potential of a terrorist doing things happen with so much extra police presence? And then one really happens. And not only does the guy get away with it. It, it's just incredible in its scope. And then the next day, a whole bunch of laws get slammed through. And off we go, Canada, to uh, wherever ISIS has its um, halal food truck. And, and we paid a, a couple of million bucks to fly a plane over there from McDonnell Douglas and, uh, and scatter some um, meat all over the, uh, the road someplace. We're not really doing that great of a job there. Or why are we there in the first place? Okay, got off a little farther than I thought. But how did this guy get away with shooting this guy getting away from this highly visible area in this uh, uh, world of a heightened sense of security. And doesn't that always happen? Happen at 7-7 in London. Happen at 9-11 in New York. Wow. Look out if they're doing planned exercises in your neighborhood. How did this guy get from there in the real world, unmolested all the way in after the shooting and down the street and in a car and no cops? I mean, that's ridiculous. This is the most prominent area of the most prominent political city in Canada. Uh, Thanks, Alan. Good question. Uh, I think once you study the computers and the technology available to the people who run Canada, uh, the computers and satellite give people the power to monitor the planet from the high frontier platforms. Uh, Let's not forget, we ended last year with major satellite warfare using particle beam weaponry. Uh, We've got some very, very backstage behind the global theater, what is going on? As we enter 2015, what goes on is the different trading blocks on the planet are starting to are battling with each other using high tech, advanced physical principle weaponry, which we should call particle beam for want of another word. But there's that's important to recognize uh, as as we enter 2015. 
Um, the battle continues today. We've had a major assassination of some publishers in Paris. Yeah. Um, so the, the the global theater, uh, this is all scripted and all uh, planned to create fear, to create insecurity. And certainly the operation in Ottawa was the same, uh, had the same sort of a, a thing going on. I mean, the events there were orchestrated uh, by the authorities, mostly by ordering the police to stand down. So it was another stand down while there was a drill on. Same, event, same thing going on in Ottawa uh, as was going on on 9-11 and Oklahoma. There's these drills going on, <laughs> but the forces of the establishment of the authorities are doing a drill yeah. And all of a sudden, there's a stand down, and the police, the police are told to look out of the way, and some guy starts shooting people. At them <laughs> You're expected to believe the odds. This happens every time. A long gun. I mean, under normal <laughs> conditions, anybody who knows anything about Ottawa or the security that the Crown has over the Parliament Hill, I mean, you can't do anything there without the okay of the British Crown, which is the head of state of Canada. Yeah. So, um, you know, nothing happens on Parliament Hill. And remember, the key to power, don't forget, when you look at Ottawa, uh, who, 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 or who ushers in the representatives of the Canadian people to an audience with the Queen? Who, who does, does that? that? I, I don't. Who does? I don't know. The mace holder. Oh, yes, the of course. Kevin Vickers. Died. Right. Kevin, Kevin Vickers. OK, let me stop here and say uh, for the listeners that might not be familiar, and that's probably most of you because uh, we have a lot of listeners outside of Canada. Uh, Kevin Vickers was the um, uh, the ceremonial. Uh, w- what's his official title? There's no ceremonial. Nothing. That's a cover. OK, but what do they the call him? Though? Holder. He's the one who leads like a shepherd, the representatives of the people to have an audience with Her Majesty, the Queen. You know, the Queen, the head of state, gives audiences. You just can't get an audience with Her Majesty the Queen. Right. As a matter of fact, the way in which we choose a government in this country, let's not forget, yeah. is yeah. a bunch of parties run for a, the election uh, on the Democratic voting system, and then the guy with the most seats is led to an audience with the Queen, and she anoints him and gives him the right to rule. But he doesn't get the right to rule from the people. He gets it from Her Majesty the Queen. And everybody in Ottawa is a member of the Privy Council and run by the Privy Council. And they control the law society. But the Privy Council runs the whole show. And uh, this and of course, the mace holder is a member of the Privy Council. And he leads the people like the like the ceremonial shepherd carrying the mace, you know, the big mace he carries. That's he's bringing the mace and he's leading the, you to have an audience with Her Majesty yeah, the yeah. Queen. Nothing happens. This is a, this is a, the fact that he was involved in the so-called killing and what really happened. I don't even know. We don't even know if anybody was really killed, quite frankly, when you start to look at the facts and saw the what was going on there. And, and it, it, this was a this was a whole major look. The next day, the Tories tabled an expanded security bill. Now, this is to create the disease in order to offer the cure. I don't even know if the guy was killed, Cirillo. This whole thing. That, so this was <laughs> enabling them to table a higher security bill, right? And that's what happened. I, I mentioned that. You mentioned it again. And this is the irony is it, it was already under a heightened security when the operation that has caused right. the n- real heightened security now to take place, like the permanent heightened security to take place. It was already take a place under heightened security. So I guess heightened security doesn't really work unless you're working it. Let's not forget, speaking about the reason I mentioned Cirillo. Right, Nathan Cirillo. Let's not forget the report that Chandra Levy was assassinated because she, uh, working for the prison system department, witnessed McVeigh alive after his execution. Okay, what's the tie in here? You're talking about Chandra Levy. People, people may not I'm remember. I'm saying that just because they say a guy's shot. Oh, exactly. Or or executed. Well, uh, this is very contentious. I have to say, Lenny, this is on. they fake it on stage on the Global Theater. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to say right now, Lenny, this is this is very contentious. I mean, we just had the funeral and and some very uh, uh, somber uh, proceedings regarding the passing of. Yeah, well, there's a nice witness protection program for these people. And um, th- uh, the guy was an American and was on a visa here, a standing guard with a kilt. 
Wait a uh, second. Who, who, come on, who's, Alan. Who, who's the American? Cirillo's really an American. He's really a bit from the States. How, how do you know that? Well, they went through the records. The records are starting to be leaked by the experts. Is that the right? Show that there's no Canadian by the name of Cirillo. He's an American. I had heard he was from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Yeah, right. <laughs> Her Majesty the Crown gets, remember, the Crown gets to doctor the forensics. Let's not forget on this show. Sure. That's a prerequisite. We yeah. shouldn't have to go through this. I mean, the, the, the number of times that the authorities have altered forensic documents. So oh, you yeah. say, oh, what's his birth certificate say? It's been altered, my friend. Yeah. Birth certificate, death certificate, brains missing from the uh, uh, Kennedy investigation certificate. I mean, the for <laughs> JFK assassination, that showed us many times where the forensics were altered by the chief of Dallas police, Jesse Curry, and by by a lot of other people. Yeah. The, yeah, let's, yeah. You know. Yeah. Huh. From Russia with love, the doubles and clones. We're looking at doubles and clones a lot of times, Obama's got three of them. Steve Dunham. Oh, that uh, guy? Is he still alive? Obama. I, and, I thought uh, he was dead, that guy. That was a guy that used to I imitate. Uh... Well, there's, they've got doubles of all these guys. <laughs> yeah, that's neat. I mean, we know this from at least as far back as Saddam Hussein. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, we know it before that. I mean, I'm. I mean, it's just so visibly evident with Saddam that Hussein, Bruce that's West. all. I just mean most people. We were we were told by the Churchill. Churchill had a double, and Bruce West wrote a good book called "The Man Who Flew Churchill." I met him. He was a reporter with the Globe, and he had been over there during the war. Yeah. And he said that what they did is they had a double for Churchill, and he went from he would be they would move him from Westminster into his car, right, and the double, and then into the Ted Downing, and that's it. And meanwhile, he was in in North Africa, the real one. And we know that, like, Bush sent his double, Bush, Daddy Bush sent his double up here to meet with Mulroney to go to a ball game. He didn't want yeah. to go. He was sick. <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to go to a ball game with Mulroney either. So I got to, uh, that's one thing Bush did that I agree with. Uh, listen, I want to get back to this whole um, um, thing here in Canada. Yes, we're in Canada, folks. This is Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park, Sirius XM Channel 167. We're in Canada. We're in Toronto. And um, it's cold and it's really cold. And the political climate is what I'm talking about, not the weather. Um, so that's what they're doing. They're calculatingly moving us towards the security state. And boy, it got through so quickly this time. Remember when 9-11 happened, Lenny? We had uh, uh, the tapes were playing over and over and over and over and over again. It was nuts. And but with this particular incident in Ottawa. Oh, no. Just like it was on that that day, and then that was it, and then the laws got passed the next day, and then, you know, we don't hear it, we don't see it all over again. And then that was the, what enabled us oh. to fly over and take on ISIS now. You know what, <laughs> Alan, what they do, what the British Crown does with Canadians and Americans is they, and the media, through the media, is they create this scenery so that they hide what's really going on backstage. So publicly, they'll say one thing, their leaders will say one thing publicly, but then... There's a diplomatic pouch being carried by a marine uh, naval intelligence courier from the White House to um, the Kremlin, and uh, it's written on a piece of paper as to the real story, oh. right? The real. When you said diplomatic pouch, I immediately thought of John Baird. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, John Baird. All right. And so what can we expect from this heightened new security state as we look down the road into 2015 vis-a-vis -vis Canadians uh, well, jumping I, into the NSA world? Listen, I think that with MK Ultra and with the – we, I think what you have to do is just put together a matrix of the technologies. Once you start to think of um, – once you start to realize – like uh, uh, Condon's law, there's a famous law, Condon's law. He he did. Uh, he was a famous movie producer. C O N D O N. Yeah, uh, Richard Richard Condon, Richard Condon yeah. law said, "When you don't know the whole truth, then your worst fears are bound to be close." Oh, so Fox News viewers. So here's what we do. Um, let's just look at 1945. Now, what are your worst fears when you take a Deep blue computer from IBM in 1945, yeah. plus an electron microscope. I mean, it, it, you can turn this into an equation. Uh, blue, uh, 
a computer, IBM Blue, plus an electron microscope, plus Dr. Mengele oh. equals what? <laughs> What's your worst fear? Boys of Brazil? <laughs> Genome mapping. Right. Which is what was done in 45 and 46 by these guys. So they've been mapping the genome and creating clones and doubles and and uh, I mean, we had a movie called Universal Soldier. We've had a lot of Hollywood's put out a lot about this technology. They, and, but it's important to say, well, what's your worst fear? Because that's exactly what they're doing. Well, I want to ask you about that, because when those movies come out, and this is why I said about Saddam Hussein, we, we knew that he was, you know, we, we, we became we I mean, the public, generally speaking, became more conscious of doubles as a real thing by the Western media, by our side, if you will, during the Saddam Hussein time, because we used to make fun of him, uh, and this was in the mainstream news. We used to make fun of him and, and put him down as this crazy foreign dictator kind of guy in the mainstream way, and uh, and basically, um, you know, make fun of this guy. And and because we said his country, his countrymen hate him so much, he can't even attend some of these events. He has to send doubles, and then they would show a double, and 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 you know, the guy that looked a heck of a lot like him, but not totally him. And there were like news. I mean, there's got to be stuff like this on YouTube. But I remember these shows, and it was it was like you know, sixty minutes type of thing in news magazines. You go, look at this guy. I mean, he's such a jackass over there. And they were always kind of. But meanwhile, they're propping him up officially and all this kind of thing. And and he, it wasn't really like that at all. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, don't forget that the, 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 the modus operandi of doubles was used uh, as early as the JFK assassination when, um, as the Warren Commission notes, the height of the Oswald that left was a lot different than the height of the Oswald who returned. Well, okay, that's true, but before we stick on JFK, just to go back to Saddam, the thing I guess I was really trying to hope to get to and didn't, but then you reminded me was... Oh, uh, Saddam had a double. There was a movie about right. it called devil's double sure yeah but like i say we used to make fun of him the, the mainstream media used to make fun of him and right. then but then but then when he dies everybody believed it was him why yeah. <laughs> why i mean how could you not and then some people even posited that it was a double that was killed or maybe no one was killed but maybe it was a double that was killed and the real saddam still has you know the payroll and now he's getting his retirement fee uh, the way a politician does <laughs> after service, he's still getting, you know, he's probably down in South America or some other place, the real guy. And it was some other dummy that took the hit or whatever. And why is that notion so inconceivable when we all knew that he had Question. doubles when we were alive, when when he was alive? Because people don't think out of the box. They just are stuck in the left hemisphere, just one way thinking. But that's what I mean. They were in the box thinking he had doubles. They already knew this in the good times when we were making fun of his ass because he couldn't show up at places without people taking shots at him from balconies. And that's why I think it's amazing that, you know, people totally eat it up, making fun of him, and he's got doubles, and this guy can't even attend serious events in his own nation without fear of... Whatever, or or he's so rich and lazy he doesn't even want to go. He'll send a double, just pay the guy to go. Whatever. There were all kinds of notions like this. As soon as he dies, everybody believes it's definitely him. There's no way it could be a double. We can't even entertain this notion. <laughs> it, it's a, it's a crazy racket, but uh, it's fun to watch. Uh, but uh, sometimes it gets a little scary, like this, uh, you know, recent thing here. And uh, people are really causing some problems. If all this stuff wasn't going on, we you know we'd be a lot better off, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Saddam, let's not forget that Fairchild Missile Corporation was owned by Saddam. Uh, one fourth of all the missile smart bombs bought by the military Pentagon that were dropped on Baghdad. Uh, Twenty percent of the missiles were purchased and manufactured and purchased by the Pentagon from Fairchild Missile Corporation, a company owned by Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein had was reported by Sherman Skolnick, who knew the bank records and had the bank records and discovered that Saddam was uh, discovered the bank account that Saddam had with Bush, Daddy Bush and the Queen of England. And. You know, I mean, you realize that a man who has that much wealth and power, he owned Hachette, a pub, one of the largest publishing companies in France, and he had the right to a seat on the board of Daimler Chrysler, reported Skolnick. A guy who's got that much wealth and, and influence, you don't really think they're going to find him uh, unshaven sitting in a hole in Iraq, do you? <laughs> I mean, are you kidding?
This guy is a multi-trillionaire. He's got <laughs> billion dollars in an account as a yeah. float. Yeah. You keep 75 or 100 bucks. He keeps 100 billion. He's in business with the queen. <laughs> Come on, man. This guy ain't going to get picked up. He's alive. Of course he's alive. But didn't he, though, do the thing where he had his uh, the uh, ira- the Iraqi oil bores? He decided to switch it over from uh, uh, American American dollars, petrodollars, over to the uh, the euro. And that that's what caused the rift. That, uh, was that a true story? The modus operandi that's important to realize that you think that the you would think that the that the um, that the establishment is intelligence agencies would um, liquidate their top spies because they knew too much. Yeah. But on the contrary, they haven't done that. So, for instance, if they uh, they they um, remember Oswald was trained in, he spoke many languages, including Russian. He was very bright. Uh, he was trained at their top CIA base in Itsugi, Japan, in Russian studies. Uh, they the right wing generals yeah, great cafeteria the, there by the way the right wing Pentagon generals wanted to stop the summit between Eisenhower and Khrushchev, and to do it they got the U two shot down by the Russians and to right do that, Gary Powers Gary or... Powers say that it said it was Lee Harvey Oswald's defection that gave them the knowledge of when he was flying over so they could knock him down yeah. so now the modus operandi is they what happens Oswald sitting in Minsk. He's sitting having a good time because he's being paid by the U.S. government to have fun and have women. And uh, he was succeeded in his mission. He's in Minsk. Nobody's going to bother him there. He can have a good time. He's got this apartment. And uh, everything's fine. And then he gets a call. Hey, they want to use him for their next job because the way the intelligence and the generals and the intelligence agencies work is whoever colonel or major in the field was successful – on this mission, next mission, we use him again. He's successful. Sure, yeah, makes sense. They, right? Yeah. So that's exactly what they did. They used him on their second mission. And he was good to go because he had a first mission and that went well. He was their golden hair boy. Yeah. They, remember, it worked. Uh, uh, Khrushchev canceled the summit. That wow. was a, a big victory for that side. I wanted to go back a little bit. You, you spoke earlier a lot uh, uh, in relation to all of these points uh, with the crown, which we know is the uh, royal situation over there in England, whatever that is, uh, the welfare family. Anyway, uh, there. And, 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 and let's not forget also that the actual person who resides on the chair yeah. is not necessarily the one who makes the fu- uh, the one who's in charge of the operations. No, but I think she does write the, the Christmas crown. speech. I think she does write the Christmas speech, and it's always something that brings a little something to oh, my yeah, stomach. I think, I think that, sure, she's she's in the loop. And definitely she's the queen. But, yeah. you know, um, there's Lord Walsingham and Lord this and Lord that and Lord this and sure. Lord that. And they influence her to do things maybe which uh, someone else might not. You know, there's influences there in the court. Like prosecute her son, Andrew, for having uh, pedophilic tendencies? Or what do you mean? That's going to be weird, right? When when Andrew has to face the crown. I mean, that's like, Andrew, what were you doing with that young boy? You know, it's going to be pretty uncomfortable down uh, Thanksgiving dinner. Well, that comes back to the book of Revelation where it says all evil is going to be exposed as the end of the age. And so that certainly is a signal that we're at the end of the age when when that sort of evil gets exposed like that. And there's a situation where we see behind the global c- scenery. This global scenery develops a, a, a tear. Yeah. Um, and there's a tear in the global scenery there. I noticed that it's spelled the same as tear, <laughs> which is uh, what I shed many of when I think about this stuff too heavily. Yeah, I think I used to shed a tear. I think that um, I sort of feel uh, that uh, enough time's gone by that it's now fool me five times. Shame <laughs> me. Yeah. Like fool me 500 times. Fool me once, shame on you. That's true. But what about fool me 50,000? Yeah. Is yeah. it still shame on you? Or when does it become shame on me? Uh, I think it's shame on them. They should have been able to see this before. It's sticking out here and there. 
Come on. I mean, every one of these, I mean, you know what? I'm tired of it, right, Alan, because they should have seen all those planes shot down. And they should have seen uh, Which all ones? the Aryan missiles shot down in the 70s that were that the, uh, the, the European Union was testing its rocket program in, in the north of South America, on the north shore of South America. Like what, Venezuela or something? Not the south shore of North America. <laughs> north shore of South America. Okay, not Galveston, but... Uh... They were Aruba. Aryan rockets, and they were always being reported as crashed, crashed, yeah. crashed. Yeah. And you know, people up here started to realize, talking to people in the states, that well, how come they're all crashing? Oh, I wonder. Uh, particle beams, uh, ferries. They're, you know, they're shooting these things down with particle beams in the seventies, Alan. So that that just wasn't a, a bad a bad phase in the development of that type of aircraft. Well, we are techno aristocrats living in poverty here. Yeah. But we're techno aristocrats, not financial aristocrats or class aristocrats, but we're technical arist aristocrats. So we were aware of what technology has been built and in the lab and which ones have been employed in the field. Yeah. And if the rockets start to get shot down, we know it right away. Yeah. Yeah, it's always amazing. Like why can't we find these planes all the time? Is this a new thing now? That's another thing that happened in twenty fourteen. We got two planes. Well, look, the best way to have a war backstage between these these kings and, and between these nations, when kingdom goes against kingdom, they shoot down the plane. Why? Well, you know, the, the monarch is the one who owned the company and sold it off or something. You know, like yeah. uh, they shoot. They, 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 it's a game of chess for these guys. Like today's incident in Paris, it's a game of chess. I hit you. I'll take your bishop with my rook. Okay, so like the operation happens in Paris or nine eleven. It's a it's a grand chessboard game. Right. Yeah, you want but it the visible. People are deceived about the grand chessboard game going on, but we've got big technology. Some of our rooks and bishops on this on their chessboard are particle beam weapons or hurricane creators. They've got all sorts of heavy, heavy technological weaponry that the ordinary guy doesn't know about and should. Right. Now, what about that kind of thing? Is that like harp? Is that what you're talking about? A hurricane generator? Is that what you mean? Harp? You know, harp is only one part of a large advanced physical principle principal network of weaponry that they've developed based on Tesla power discoveries. I mean, look, the discovery, electricity wasn't there when we walked out of the garden. Lenny? We have to stop for a second because it's a radio show. It's a radio show that you're listening to on Sirius XM Channel 167. It's Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park. We're with Lenny Bloom, and we'll be right back. And we are back. We have returned. Thank you for coming with us. Uh, still here with Lenny. You know, 3,983 B.C., we walked out of the garden. But, but... It was thousands of years until it showed up, 1700. So you're looking at over 5,000, like 5,000 years ago. You know, it's been 5,000 years of man's existence. That we get to the point of where now we've got electricity. And electricity was a discovery. We don't know where the stuff comes from. Right. Nobody knows how to get it. I don't think if anybody was left on their own, they'd know how to get some electricity. They can get gold and this and that. But how <laughs> do they get electricity? They don't know, even know about it. You pass a wire between a magnet and it develops electricity and nobody's figured out why yet or how it happens. And yet we've created a whole human society based around it. Yeah. So what are we saying? Are we saying that this weird technology in form of power discovery where we flip a wire between a magnet, you don't think maybe there's some other way of generating power? Good point. Is yeah. there not cold fusion? Uh, the head of the, the the Eugene Malov, which is a scientist with the uh, with with uh, the, one of the most famous science journals in the United States, wrote an article to the president, "Fire from Ice" on his book, and they assassinated him. What's his cold name fusion. again? What's his name? Cold fusion. They cover up cold fusion. And what's his name again? Eugene Malov. Ma Eugene Malov. Okay. Eugene Malov. M A W L wrote the book "Fire from Ice." Uh, one of the it uh, brought to attention the Pons Fleischmann discovery of chemical cold fusion, which is a process that that they're using now, and this is why they can get rid of oil because they've now got cold fusion. 
They can get rid of oil now because they got cold they fusion. The but, people, the, the, but that's the, not going to build plastic. Back. That's not going to make plastic and, and cables and wires and all the it's other things we use plastic for, oil for. Yeah, the ruling elite already moved to cold fusion long ago, so they don't need gas. No, but, but Lenny, what, what about plastic? All these compounds that are made of oil. We still need oil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But but the point, no. But the point is this: that there's other means of generating very powerful weaponry based on high powers of high amounts of power generation, like the Tesla power generation. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's that the beam it creates a beam of energy that can blast a sand trap off the moons of Saturn. So, in spirituality and religion, forgiveness is important. Are we able to forgive the people and the cabal and the system that? oppressed a person like Tesla and painted him up to be a crazy man, thereby, you know, ruining his life and depriving everybody else of the benefits of his intelligence. Well, the prince of the power of the air, Lucifer, is the great electric engineer, and he manipulates the inventions to our detriment. So he's starting to use electricity to speed us up and spin us up and spin us and so he's spinning the world moving at high speed uh, scrubbing off their identity so when the morning they don't know who they are they've lost their identity because they're moving at such high rates of speed speeds beyond the speed at which they were designed to ever exist or live at so we can't think as we're, we're, we're we cannot think fast enough to keep up with the speed of life that we've created with our electric technology. We're out of control now. We're into the area of chaos. Uh, okay, so getting back to the, the Queen thing, though, how important is it that relatively recently the Crown well, we, has passed these rules where we're not allowed to know things about them and they have secrecy clauses built up around them all around the same time that Andrew well, is around this pedophile scandal, all around the same time that once again in the States... We're going to have another Bush election. And guess who's genetically linked to the bloody royal family over there in England? And we're going to go for Bush number three. Can you believe it? Well, if he's going to run the Western world from a kitchen in his in his home, I think it's even better that they make him president anyway, rather than hide like he's doing now. I mean, right now, Bush is the president. It's just that Obama's the front man. Uh, I'd rather have the guy who actually is behind the presidency like now, if he's going to be in there anyway, you can't get him out, then let's force him into the White House and force him to have to give all these speeches and read us stuff and uh, try and harass him while he's in there. Bush is funny. Look, this guy, George Herbert Walker Bush, look, after the war, the Nazi International, the Borman Brotherhood, the, 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 the Himmler... Uh, von Bolschwing got Bush, was a Waffen-SS guy. He took over. And, of course, Mengele went to California, Lake California, China, Lake California. And Galen, uh, the West SS took over the UN and the Pentagon. They took, Val, Kurt Waldheim be, took over that the UN. They've taken, so the, they, they took over the UN. Yeah, and they yeah. took over the Pentagon. And then they took over the White House. They're a creeping cancer. Uh, they're, a, they're an Assyrian commando t terrorist operation. Well, it's nice work if you can get it. Yeah. they calling themselves the Nazis. And they basically took over with Bush and Galen, von Bolschwing, uh, Dornberger. Look at Dornberger. Yeah. Walter Dornberger, sentenced to be executed at Nuremberg, winds up the vice president, not the president, but the vice president of Bell Helicopters. I mean, Alan. In, instead of being thing, sentenced, in, instead of doing his. Being executed. Yeah. Wow. He was sentenced to be executed, not only found guilty, but sentenced to be executed. There's a letter from the British Foreign Office to the American State Department saying, carry out the execution order. This guy is dangerous. But they didn't. They made him vice president of Bell Helicopters, and he worked with Hitler in Argentina and got the Korean War going and then got the Vietnam War going. American foreign policy has been shaped by Adolf Hitler for the 50s, Korean War, and Vietnam War until he died in the – uh, early 70s. Yeah, and another piece that, you know, is easily researched is that that, that that German sort of Nazi influence coming through Prescott Bush, which was 
uh, the, the the guy that's still alive now is a, a father, right? And he yeah, made, he made money. Herman bank was it was uh, the U.S. government in forty two seized the Brown Harriman Bank because it they found it had under the Treaty with the Enemy Act he had that Bush had financed ninety percent of Nazis heavy heavy war production. Yeah, how does he get charged three times though with that? Like, <laughs> wouldn't you think once you get with that, and if it comes a second time, man, you just put the guy in jail or what? Yeah. Nothing happened is really the point. They went ahead and they they benefited by it. They took over. So you could make the argument that the uh, Nazis, the, the profiting, the profiteering from the Nazi legacy by the Bush family is is basically the. Um, Financial underpinnings of of the the journey of the political uh, story f- since the war till now. Yeah, at least. And remember, the Nazis were in concert and partnership with the British Crown. Remember, Her Majesty the Queen Mother's two sisters married the Waffen SS Hess brothers. So wow, that sounds like a crazy video. <laughs> Elizabeth's um, uncles. Yeah. Elizabeth's uncles are Waffen SS. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, her uncles, the sisters of her mother, married Waffen SS in Germany, and of course, the whole. I mean, didn't they? Didn't they get rid of the king in order to cover up the fact that they were Nazis? I guess so. That's yeah. why he stepped down with Mrs. Simpson. There's the pictures of him and her with Hitler. So they yeah. were forced to step down because they didn't want it evident. They wanted to hide it. So we're in the Fourth Reich now. Yeah, we're in the Fourth Reich. Yeah, we yeah, just they, don't know they, it. They're trying to make it a thousand years, the evil millennium, right? Yeah. They're trying to create the evil millennium. Incredible. So this is what's going on. And the battle is they're fighting the battle right now, of course. Uh, they're ba- they're part of Jacob, by the way. So in Jeremiah, J- we're living in the poetry of Jacob's trouble. So they we really uh, Ephraim and Manasseh are losing control of the British crown and the Pentagon and the whole structure there, and they're going to be detribalized and thrown out. So what what should we look for then? Uh, are we are we are we looking at a certain chapter? Like are we sliding through the Bible? At a, are we at Revelation? Well, I think we're going to have pillage. Uh, more pillage and looting. Well, isn't that ISIS? I mean, that's, these guys are nuts. It's going to reach Amer- North America, and we're going to have pillage and looting here. And that's why they're bringing in these security bills, because they need to be able to try and keep the enemy out. <laughs> mm, fantastic. I think they want to really make sure they keep the enemy out. So this is the thing. And so uh, unfortunately, I have to say then that the fear is real then, because some people will and can or do die. I mean, you know, despite what you say, how uh, 9-11 come together, people did die. There's no way out of that. And we went to Iraq and people did die. And there's no oh, way yeah, out of that. Like died. there is human real collateral this damage. Is a, this is a battle between Christianity and Islam. This is a religious war on that level for sure. People are dying. Yeah. But each side sometimes creates a false flag to blame the other side. In that case, they fake it. They have these actors, crisis actors, that they're saying murders happened. Oh, sorry. We can't go right there now, Lenny, because it's just a whole other area, the crisis actors. I did want to talk about uh, uh, Sandy Hook, and maybe uh, we can do that in a little bit. Well, just to sum up, Ottawa, it was a great big false flag in order to to, uh, get the— it was a psyops. They changed the psychological mindset of Canadians in one day. Yeah, it didn't take the trauma either of nine eleven. It was much much simpler. Well, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen. Thanks for coming on. Uh, you've been great as usual. I hope you have a great twenty fifteen. You'll check in with us again. I'd be glad to come back on in six months. In six months. Okay, that's what we'll do. Right now, one of the tie-in with events is what's called Jacob's Trouble. And um, we've got the throne of David uh, sitting in uh, Ephraim in London. Actually, it's in Scotland, right? And uh, you've got um, Judah and um, and Ishmael. Remember all the... Uh, all the... Um, Arabs are Ishmaelites. We, we, we basically have a situation here in Canada where it, it, we want to get into identity. Let's talk about identity. Okay. Uh, because the lost 10 tribes are now 
been found, which is important because the lost 10 tribes are that part of uh, um, Abraham's descendants known as Israel. Uh, Israel's the lost 10 tribes. And they're going to be going back to the covenant land the promised land that was promised to them. And uh, that's going to happen at the second coming of Christ. Okay. And and this is now, any, any kind of timeline we're, we're familiar yeah, with? Good timeline on it, because um, uh, we know that the creation week was 3983 BC. How do we know that? Uh, all we have to do is add up the uh, ages of the kings in uh, in the Bible and the Old Testament. The scripture, God left a clue as to how to discover how much time went from Adam to the flood and from the flood to the building of the second temple. And we know the exact date of the building of the second temple of 966 B.C. So we know exactly from 966 B.C. we can go back uh and right to the creation week, 3983 B.C. Since pretty tight. Man, now, I, since man, now listen, I got to say, don't we go back a few more years than that? That's, that's really how far you think it goes back? Well, here's the thing you've got to remember, Alan. The thing that nobody thinks about. Your scripture, your Bible makes it clear that something unique was done with the material universe by those who occupy the spiritual realm, which is way above it and exists before it. So within the spiritual realm, they did something to create the material universe. Of course, it was done not with hands of God. It was done by his spokesman, the word, the logos spoke, and the material universe came about. But mankind is limited. No man has ever made something out of nothing. Man cannot make something out of nothing. It's never been done. There isn't a thing on the planet. There isn't a product. There isn't a creation. Man has never created something out of nothing. He's always created something out of something else. Doesn't matter. The house you're sitting in came out of the ground. There was minerals there. Man didn't make the minerals. He found it and he shaped it. So everything, he's never made something out of nothing. Only the creator God can make something out of nothing. And if you can make something out of nothing and you're God, then you can create the vast universe of billions of light years and you can make it look like it's billions of light years old. But guys, it was made out of nothingness. It's only three weeks old. It's only three years old. It's only 6,000 years old. It's only 6,000 years old. The, the planet, the earth. The immaterial universe, all the numbers you're giving them, they're giving you are like, you remember the Vatican said, there's no Big Dipper up there, guys. Those stars belong to other constellations. The Earth is flat. Yeah. The guys who told you the Earth was flat are the guys who tell you that the Earth is, that the universe is 10 billion years old. <laughs> It's just as true as being telling you that the world was flat. It's bullshit. It's coming out of Rome and the Vatican. That's the devil's headquarters. So the same people that said the world is flat are the same the people that says that the world is billions dates. of years old. Are the ones who are officially giving you the dates of the universe based on half-life. Okay, For, this is right here in this moment. half-life. You know why it's called half-life? Yeah. half-truth. Okay, you know what? Right now I have to smack you down. You know why? Because what? I have to smack you down, Lenny. Because you know why? Just with this chunk right now, you have cost me I don't know how much time in email. <laughs> I swear, I'm going to get so much contact about this. Anyhow, I'm not saying don't do it, but wow, it's going to be something. It's always this kind of issue that's very contentious because so, some, so many people believe, you know, I mean, that's it's billions they, of years they, old. They believe the world was flat, too. Come on. <laughs> but I don't know if you can really put those on the same uh is as an analogy. Yeah, it is a good analogy. The same guys who lied to you and been telling you the earth was flat are lying to you and telling you that the earth is six billion or ten billion years old or twenty billion, whatever it is. Yeah. It's a joke. Well it took us it's a long lie. time to even evolve just to it's figure out lie. it's the same guys telling you the lie. You don't believe them. It's half truth. 
It's not even half truth. They told you they went to the moon. It's bull. It's horse baloney. It doesn't never happened. It couldn't happen. They can't go to the moon. Every scientist has told us that. You can't get to the moon. There's a Van Allen belt that's like the rock, like that rock, that whole it rocks in Star Wars. That's well, the but Van Allen belt. Not, There's not every. There's not, radiation. You need lead walls six feet in, di- in thickness. Did you ever see the command module going that they said went to the moon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was made of tinfoil. Uh, <laughs> Brought to you by Alcoa. <laughs> yeah. It's a joke. So yeah. they tell you they went to the moon. They're telling you lies. Big yeah. lies. Okay. So who are these guys that told us the world is flat and told us these lies about gazillions of years ago? I'm going to quote to you from Psalm 115. Is this from the Bible, Psalm? Yeah. Okay. Verse 16 of... So all you Bible scholars out there... Or <laughs> all two of them on my show. Go to, go to Psalm 115, verse 16, and listen to the word of God, the Creator, when he said, The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Men were never allowed to leave the planet. That's why Lucifer wants you to think they went to the moon. They're not allowed to leave the planet. That's what it says. The earth was given to the children of men. You're a pilot. But, but, but the heavens, even the heavens, are the Lord's. Okay, but you're a pilot. Yeah. So aren't you leaving the world when you do that? Or is it within the atmosphere and the... Well, the they, ionosphere, or is that even too much science? Uh, you know, there's three words for heaven in the Old Testament. There's the heaven meaning where the planes fly. There's heaven meanings where the planets fly. Yeah. And there's the heaven, which is a, a different dimension, not material, but spiritual. So uh, the, the spiritual heaven and the where the planets fly are the lords he didn't let man he he didn't mind men uh, putting some circling around it but he would we can't leave the earth they don't want you to know that there's no they can send little you know what they can do they can send little unmanned vehicles there and land but they can't go themselves like the mars rover and that kind of thing well You know, what they do is in order to build this particle beam system, the Nazi International, the Nazi Brotherhood, faked the moon landing, took the money from the Treasury of the United States, siphoned it to NASA, and then used it in Houston to build Space Command and put up satellites so that they could shoot down particle beams and platforms so they can spy on North Americans and spy on everybody from platforms, satellite platforms over... Is that what happened to the shuttle, uh, the satellite, oh gosh, the uh, shuttle, uh, 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 what was it, over in See, 2000? Our airspace, our, our heaven space over the over North America is protected. You, the Russians can't send a satellite over yeah. here. The one uh, that crashed uh, over Palestine, Texas. Remember that one, the the, uh, the, the shuttle back in 2003 or something? Well, the two shuttles were knocked down by particle beams, both of them. We, I reported it at the time. I mean, you just look at it. It was obviously, I mean, even the, even the official stories were so obviously lies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anybody. <laughs> I know they're so funny sometimes. They I mean. cook up these lies and they got a Thord heritage. You know, if the politicians come out and tell you the moon is made of cheese, most people will believe it. They don't think about, well, wait a second. What I saw, I saw that rocket go up and it blew up. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that? And they're telling us it's because the O rings had leaks. Yeah, the washers. If something leaks. It means there's not a lot of pressure. That like, like it leaks. It wouldn't blow up. It would blow up if it didn't leak. I mean, I look at it. I go, that thing blew up. I've seen I've seen planes hit by particle beams, and they have no gasoline or any explosives on board. They're gliders, and they blow up just as if they had fuel. So. It's once again, you go, if you're a techno aristocrat, you won't be fooled by these lies and garbage that they feed. Yeah. It's, it, they've been feeding the baloney. I've been watching it since the 70s. I start, Clay Shaw trial is when I woke up. 
I woke up in 69 with the Clay Shaw trial and started saying, oh, this is all scenery. I got to see what's going on backstage. Hey, this is a this is a show here. This is Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park you're listening to now. And it's a show, and uh, we try to present things. W- w- what do you think about what's going on in show business with Joan Rivers dying and Robin Williams dying and Bill Cosby being, you know, this whole uh, raping thing? And now I've just seen recently that from 60 Minutes, the uh, news magazine expose show where they get behind the story. It turns out that um, Steve Croft is being reported by the National Enquirer uh, yep. as to having a, a mistress where he guzzled champagne from her ass. <laughs> so what, what what I was going to get to, well, that's kind of, you know, prurient, I guess. But what I mean to say is that this is a guy, Steve Croft, who's, you know, in the perceived media. Now, I don't believe 60 Minutes to be across the board, 100% straight shooters. How could they be? Mainstream kind of thing. But But people do. People do believe this. And now... This another trusted source is now a scandalous kind of guy, just like Bill Cosby. It seems like a timing of now. I'm not saying Bill Cosby didn't do these things, uh, and I'm not saying he did. I don't know really. I guess, but there seems to be an orchestration all, all, all at the same time of these similar types of events. And you could say that one causes the other to roll it out. But how about the fact that this Steve Cross trusted newsman is now to be not trusted? And and you know it's it's on and on, and it's kind of getting people on the one hand. You know, keep them on their, uh, keep them afraid. That's one good way to rule. Keep them afraid, but also keep them confused. And now we don't even know who our trusted news sources are, and, and, and they're having terrible things going on, behind, you know, in the secrets kind of thing. And uh, it, it's kind of shaking the faith, if you will, and getting people to scramble around. All interesting timing seems like heightening the tensions. Yeah, well, we're definitely moving into beyond Sodom and Gomorrah. In our in the value system, since they've uh, since they've moved away from the true laws of God, and since they've rejected the true laws of God, they now move towards their own makeup. And the Lucifer spurs on those who favor the unnatural use of the body, and the unnatural use of the body today is rampant. And those who are you mean like skateboarding. No, the unnatural use of the sexual body of oh. the body is rampant, and uh, it, it's uh, you know those who do unnaturally use the body are more sensitive to the proddings of demons. So usually you find people who worship demons, demonic creatures, and uh, uh, those who do that into that move higher through the levels of bureaucracy and politics in in this world. You get yeah, my drift? I do. Sure. I see it too. Yeah. So those who are into the satanic cults and satanic elite tend in Lucifer's world to rise to the top with, uh, and those who are not perverted and not, um, and, 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 uh, heterosexual and normal, uh, they sort of don't fit in and to aren't as susceptible to the proddings of the demon world. So the, the politics and where power congregates in this world, you'll find a congregation of evil spirits and demons. And those positions, you'll find the people who rise up to the top to take those positions are the ones who are closer to these satanic cults. And they flash these, these the finger signs. God, that, you're talking about the White House here. Yeah, yeah, you know. Of course, the White House is going to have demons. It's, it, whoever you just described the White House. Got <laughs> yeah. heavily involved in demonic activity to get to the top of the White House. I mean, of course. Look, the look. Let's not kid ourselves. The British famous magazine, the official newspaper of record of of England, the Telegraph, reported and quote uh, printed the quote of the chief exorcist of the Vatican, and he was quoted as saying, "Lucifer, the devil." AKA the devil lives in the Vatican. He's already, it's already been reported in mainstream media that, he, that this is what's happening. <laughs> yeah. So it's not a matter of debatable interpretation anymore. It's a matter of record Look reported by up. the British Telegraph. Yeah. Wow. I mean, so it, it, evil's been exposed and it's going to be exposed more and more and more. 
And it's going to be exciting to watch and to see a lot of these guys and who are crooked. We've got to listen. We've got a lot of crooked judges that are down. I, that's my prediction. Do we my, have any? Do we have any legitimate ones? Twenty fifteen is now. You're going to start to see the the Scalia's gets gets what would be what would rhyme with Scalia? <laughs> Mamma mia! He's going to get skinned. The skinning of Scalia. I mean, all this crooked judges. In well, the we end. hope so, but but I have to say, like it's like an oozing pus that somebody's <laughs> going to release, <laughs> a squeeze it, and out are going to come all these crooked judges in America from but the Supreme Court down. This sounds like a fantasy to me. Listen, this the George bank- Bush guy can't even travel anymore. Is it is it bank- true that we can put this guy in jail? We got bankruptcy court chiefs of the bankruptcy courts in America own the bank across the street from the courthouse. Huge corruption. These guys have to be exposed. I predict they will be. Well, how can we accelerate this? Well, uh, get the show out. Oh, we'll get the show out. But I mean, what else can we do? I mean, well, I want, who, let's name some names. Can we? Can we do that? I mean, can we name some companies? Can we name some cities? Can we name some? I mean, other than saying, you know, Obama and Bush and everything. Well, the justice system, we just I just named some names. Okay, I got those. I just thought there might be more. I mean, let's really blow this up. Oh, thing I'm out. sure there are more. <laughs> I can't name all the names because I don't know all the names. I just know that the system is rife with corruption. Oh. And I know that that uh, I, since 63, 64, with Warren, Chief Justice Earl Warren covering up, being corrupted and covered up the real murder of John Kennedy, he covered up that murder. He was the Chief Justice. From him forward, there's it's... Look, the fish rots from the head back, and if it, the guy at the top is crooked and extortion friendly, I mean the whole the whole bunch of them are going to inherit the same corruption, which has happened since '64. And you can name some of the names; they're not sure. difficult to figure out. Yeah, I just, the Howard Hunts and the yeah. So the bottom line is, uh, I think you'll see in 2015 as a prediction. You're asking me what might happen. I think you'll start to see the judges, the crooked judges, will start to be more exposed. It's about time these guys. We've got to get them expunged. Well, I agree. I hope that you're uh, right about that. So uh, listen, thanks for uh, sticking around for the extra bit. I sure appreciate it. It's a, a little less, uh, you know, it's a little more wild shoot 'em up at the end of this thing. Usually, uh, you know, where we just get to talk about whatever you like. So. Uh, thanks for talking about that. Well, Alan, it's really fun getting on here and just spilling the beans, and uh, it's really, really enjoyable. And it's a private channel, which is great. Yeah. So uh, it's not a it's it's air. It's not something that you you can. Uh, it's something that comes out in dialogue, organizing ignorance for discovery, taking the technique of the suspended judgment. People have to start looking at the world and 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 realize that there's a big Blood, bread, and circus show going on, and learn to to try and see behind it. Like like, remember Perseus looking at 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 Gorgon Medusa. If you look right at her, you got you you're going to get numbed. But you got to find a, a a mirror to sort of use the media as a mirror and see what this thing's really like. Yeah. You know. Well, that that's uh, that's about it. I mean, this story moves very quickly, doesn't it? We've just uh, uh, this is going to date the show, but they all are, of course, if you listen to them. But we, I've just got the news now that the three suspects have been ID'd and uh, two brothers trained in Yemen as assassins. Uh, yeah, uh, and a man has already turned himself into the police. So this thing is already, you know. <laughs> I, so basically, they're stepping up the crusades because at the top, big left and big right are the same guy. Yeah. So um, the chessboard game goes on. Let's get the war. Let's get the crusades going. So there's this is this is up in the ante. Ante, you know, the only way to get them to throw around atomic bombs is you got to use fanatics. I think at some point they'll hand them a bomb. We've already had. Remember, Oklahoma was the first use of an at- fission bomb. All uh, the, uh, what bomb, kind of bomb was that? A fission bomb. Oh, fission bomb. Right. Right. F-I-S-S-I-O-N. Yeah, sort of blew bomb. it out in a cone from the inside. A nuclear but atomic, very, very tactical atomic bomb was used at Oklahoma City, the Murrah Building. Yeah. And um, 9-11, they used tactical uh, fission bombs. The place burned and smoked for weeks. It, it Controlled disintegration, those little charges don't make it smolder for weeks. 
But what makes a building smolder for weeks is a combination of uh, fission bomb plus uh, high, you know, Tesla energy weaponry. Right. I mean, this is these, these these you know what they're doing is they have these high tech weapons and they don't tell the people. So it's like you taking your flashlight and going into the convenience store and buying one of those cheap little lasers and getting on a plane and going to deepest dark Africa. And you've got your little laser pen and now you point to the tree and you your, your laser in your cuff illuminates it. And the people go, oh, look, he's a god. He's a god. Right. Yeah. Like you've got the laser pen in your cuff, they can't see it, and you're pointing and distracting their attention to a tree, and the, it lights up with a laser light. I am God. I can make light, light come down from heaven, and I'll, you, you shine the laser. Sounds like the Wizard of Oz, you know. Right. You sign the laser. Oh, fire came down from God. The people now worship you as a God. Why? Well, they didn't know about the convenience store product. Yeah. That's the same thing today. People don't know about the local convenience store product that's available to the aristocrats and the owners of the system. So th they distract their attention and, and, and deceive them. Will they continue? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I put my money on that. A very small club. Yeah. Because they just don't, uh, they're never going to wake up until it's too late. Well, that sounds pretty grim. What a way to sign off. Well, <laughs> you might as well give them the truth. Yeah, that's what I think. I think that's the safest way to go no matter what, right? Well, you know what? The only way out is to get on your knees and pray to God. Okay, we but didn't get to this during the main part of the show, but I wanted to, I wanted to mention... 12, Ecclesiastes 12, what's the summation of the... What's the end of the matter? The wisest man, Solomon, who ever lived, yeah. finished up the book of Ecclesiastes, and he said... Here's the end of the matter. I'm the wisest man who ever lived. What is it all about? Fear God and keep fear God and keep his commandments. That was it. Mm. Okay, well, I don't know if I really want to do that, but I'll look into it. Um I don't really want to fear that kind of thing, you know. I just well, want fear to live God, my life. Yes, this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Yeah. So that's what's going to happen this year. More and more of the secret things are going to get exposed. So we're going to have a fun year. Well, this is it. This is why I want to talk about this. I want to give you this thing because – what's All that? guys in the darkness are going to be thrust out into the light. Well, here's one now. I wanted to give it to you earlier in the other part of the show when I was talking about that Ottawa shooting. But when I said Kevin Vickers was the, the, the mace holder – and I asked you, what is his real position? You said, oh, that's nonsense. He's just a holder of the mace. But what do they call him? He's a sergeant at arms? Or what do they say? Yeah, sergeant of arms. Okay. So that guy, the sergeant of arms, and I asked you if you'd, saw, if you'd seen Evan Solomon on Power and Politics describe the event in dramatic fashion, you know, and you didn't see it. That's okay. I'm going to tell you about it because I think people should check it out and have a look at it because this is exposing a lot. He did a piece on it and basically, you know, summed up the terrible tragedy of yesterday and 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 explained on a large video wall in a way that doesn't tend to usually happen on his show. Um, but anyway, well, I guess it was I, a special I, event. I, Alan, now that I think about it, I did see. Uh, yes, you're right. I did see the thing that thing he did on Vickers. He basically just reenacted it, and he did the roll around, and he described Kevin Vickers, this 65 year old guy or whatever, kind of rolling around like Bruce Willis and Die Hard, uh, so that it threw the attention off of the shooter. And as he rolled underneath, he dramatically, you know, blasted into the alcove that this particular man was standing and hiding in, um, much like all of the other several cameramen that were hiding in other alcoves with their cameras, so we could see this. Anyway, uh, he he uh, he had him in there, and he made the shots, you know, bang, 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 and, and shot the guy and killed the guy, and then now Kevin Vickers is the hero. And we got to see uh, the marks on the wall. We got to see the bullet marks where the guy was standing, and there was a plaque on the wall that right there that says something. You know those old buildings, those old, like, uh, if you're in Europe, it's kind of like an old uh, church-style building, this old parliament building. It's about as old a building as you get in Canada. And uh, it's got a lot of alcoves and, and, and hidden passageways, and that kind of thing. And uh, so this guy was standing there, apparently. He was shot there, apparently, as was reported to us on CBC by Evan Solomon. And then it turns out that a gentleman um, 
had been a, a tourist, if you will, at, at the Parliament House. Of course, they do that, just like touring the White House. And he had been there in, in 2013, and he had taken all kinds of photographs, as people always do now. And uh, the nine bullet holes that were in the wall were in this gentleman's photograph from, like, April 2013, you know, a year and a half before the event that put the nine bullet holes in the wall. Right. So, in other words, there was some funny business right from the start uh, that, that right off the bat, it, you could see that it was a lot. The whole thing was a false flag. Yeah. Maybe, and maybe the kid never maybe no one was killed, as right. I said. I don't think anybody was really killed. Yeah, that's fascinating. Hmm. You know, it's easy to bring these guys in and then take them out. Who's going to go looking for them? Are you going to be Eric Regulie and go find the Munsinger? I lost the I lost the reference. Eric Regulie was the star correspondent who came out and discovered that Gerda Munsinger was alive. And who's Gerda Munsinger? Gerda Munsinger was a, a prostitute spy who was supposed to be dead, and the government said she was dead. So the government of Canada said that this spy that they started to hear, the news started to talk about how this spy that was a spy lady, a prostitute, had visited Canadian Canadian uh, diplomats and Canadian politicians. And they said, well, no, no, she's dead. She doesn't exist. And Eric Regulie of the Star found her in an apartment in, in Germany and exposed that the government was lying. That's fantastic. When was this? In the 60s. Oh, okay. See, all this stuff has happened long before ago, and they've been caught with their hand in the cookie jar. But time goes by and people forget, and they don't. the media doesn't remind you and connect the dots. The media, the biggest liars going, man. Hey, that, I take personal offense to this. Hey, hey, I got a show right here. That was sarcastic. Don't worry. Yeah, and we're, you're not the media. Well, I got a show on one. Hey, listen, I got to take oh, a yeah. second right here and thank Sirius XM. I got to say, I know what you're going to say, maybe, and I want you to hear. I want you to tell me. But before you do, I want to say, without sucking up, Sirius XM has been fantastic to me. They they have accommodated a relocation that was a mutual decision. They have uh, uh, always been there to back me up, and they said one thing: please don't swear on the show. And I haven't. And and if I have, I've taken it out. Yeah, and but I they have... said you can talk about whatever you want, whatever you want. Exactly. And so that's talking, cool. I'm talking about the major media when I say the media. The <laughs> now they're going to take offense. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the media that reaches the with the news. Sure, sure. CBS, NBC, all, uh, CNN, all that stuff. Yeah, right. Fox that's News, what I all mean that. By yeah, the I know what you mean. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm just riding you. That's all. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, you know, uh, we didn't have a uh, New Year's together. No, we missed that. We, I was, uh, I, I, I had a tooth extracted. Wow. And uh, I was under the weather. I had that Was it your tooth? On the 30th, so I had stitches and pain heavy painkillers. Mm, what kind? Oh, I don't want to mention on air. But... <laughs> <laughs> we'll that, cut it out, don't worry. That, that a doctor, a dentist in a hospital would prescribe for oh. pain. Oh, that a dentist? Okay, like a Norwegian yeah. dentist? Yeah. Norwegian. Hmm. A marathon man dentist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, listen, this has been great and fantastic. And with me and, and being there for me, you're a friend and a scholar and a very smart and fun man. I'm going to get some trouble. We're going to talk about it later. Uh, uh, and thanks, everybody that's been listening, for uh, sending things in. The show's release has been sporadic. I am very well aware of this. Um, we've been running some repeats here and there. Uh, and uh, I appreciate your patience. And, uh, and a lot of you know some of the reasons, and hopefully all of you will know all of the reasons. Uh, later on but thanks for supporting the show as you do and uh thanks again lenny bloom for coming on good and uh, god bless we'll speak to you real soon have a great 2015 thanks for listening to conspiracy queries with alan park please offer comments or complaints by emailing conspiracy queries at gmail.com or on twitter at con underscore queries or at our website conspiracyqueries.com Thanks for listening.